Good morning. Welcome to worship today to those here in the room and those watching online. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you could combine in one person someone who is tough as nails and yet soft as a teddy bear, that would be Hank. Hank was weather-worn by the years of life and all the things he had experienced, most significantly the war he had fought in. He had seen the absolute worst of all humanity. When he got back to the United States, Hank, who was tough as nails, got to work and built up his own company to the point of having over 50 employees. His army buddies called him Hank the Tank. His employees very reverently called him Sir. But to most people, they just called Hank Pops. His five children had absolute love and respect for all that he had done and been through in life. His 25 grandchildren revered him as this war, real-life American hero. And, and Hank was cuddly enough that he would even bounce his grandchildren on his knees. But all that he had done and all that he had been through and the tough-as-nails Hank came crashing to pieces with just one word, cancer. He was staring blankly in disbelief at the doctor as the next words came out, stage three, cancer. Everything in the following moments kind of went fuzzy as he grabbed onto his wife's hand and then as they left the hospital and were driving down the road, he couldn't seem to think clearly at all or make any focus or purpose out of life. How could this be? After all that I've been through and I've made it through war and I've built up this company and now, and now cancer and now death's door is right in front of me, Hank just felt so lost. If you looked at Desiree, you wouldn't think that she was lost. Everywhere she went in the high school hallways was always on a beeline and with purpose and on point and always very focused and everywhere she went. But you see, Desiree did this to keep her mind distracted from everything else. She was so focused on school and so focused on work and focused on tests because really all of it was becoming so overwhelming to her. All her classmates just saw her succeed and get good grades, but what they didn't know is how hard she worked and how hard it was and how much the homework was piling up and how much the tough classes were overwhelming her and how much all the goals of future life were just squishing and squashing her. Worst of all, as Desiree made her way through all the hallways, she tried to do so with like this half smile to hide the hurt that was really underneath because Desiree's best friend since third grade had completely stabbed her in the back. How could she say that about her? The one person that she could count on. And now, even worse than that, her name, Desiree's name, was in the mouth of every single student or on their Snapchat and Instagram she could hardly bear it. As Desiree made her way into the classroom and sat down, in the opposite corner was BJ. And on outward surface, really, BJ and Desiree had not much in common. They only had this one class, one time, this one semester. They hardly saw each other. They didn't hang out outside of school. But what they didn't know is that they were both in so much pain on the inside. But for BJ, it wasn't from other classmates or from school pressure. No, for, for BJ, all the hurt and pain was at home. His family was a mess and broken. And the people that God had designed to love him and to care for him were just failing. His parents, who were broken in different homes, either didn't show up or didn't care or just downright lazy. And now finally, as a sophomore, 16 years old, it came dawning upon him that his whole life, all his other friends had parents sitting in the bleachers or sitting in the chairs and watching and attending, and he never did. He felt so lost. For each of the three, for Hank, for 
Desiree for BJ. It's tough to see with the lights, but it felt kind of like they're just wandering through this dark valley. For Hank, it felt like the darkness was literally closing in around him as death's door and stage three cancer was right in front of him. For Desiree, it felt like she was on this journey of life all alone. And in the dark hills of this valley, it's like she could hear the whisper, whispers echoing out into the air of all the people talking about her and talking behind her back. And well, for BJ, it felt like he was just on this journey completely alone with no direction at all, like he was going to trip and fall and stumble at any point on this path and he didn't know how to get out. Have you had moments like that? We are not really sure where you're going. And the darkness seems to be creeping in. And well, you just feel kind of lost disconnected from other people, disconnected from your family, maybe even as you strayed enough, disconnected from God and you're not even sure where the path is going. Could it be that maybe even right now is one of those times? It seems to me like it's kind of that time of the year where everyone's just a little bit on edge and here we are, what is it, 22 days, school days away from the end, give or take, something like that. 22 school days from the end, and oh, we just want to be done and be out of here. And yet, I bet there's just a little bit rolling around in the back of your heads thinking, you know, there's something safe about this place. And seniors might want to get out of here and get done and move on, and yet, this has been the backbone of stability for all of us for a really crazy, ridiculous year. Wisco has been a place that is stable and safe and been here for you, and out there, it gets crazy. And so maybe you've had your moments where you feel just a little bit lost. What do I do and where do I go? How am I going to get myself out of here? How am I going to make it? How am I going to fake it till I make it? How am I going to get myself unlost? Friends, I'm here to share with you the most encouraging, wonderful, amazing news. You don't have to make it or fake it or find your way out on your own because we have a good shepherd who leads sheep that wander and stray and find themselves lost. King David knew shepherds well. He was one before writing psalms and ruling Israel. King David was a shepherd and he knew the effort to care and provide for and protect sheep and he knew how sheep would wander. And so King David had this background that the Lord used to inspire the precious words that so many of us know and love in Psalm 23. Take to heart every verse of this precious psalm where God tells us this through the pen of King David. The Lord is my shepherd. Not some vindictive or vengeful God in the skies who's going to squash you into oblivion. It's the Lord, the compassionate and gracious and merciful God. He is the one who shepherds us. He doesn't beat us or drive us as slaves. He guides us and guards us like a shepherd. And so I shall not be in want. Yeah, there may be things I desire, or goals I have. But I'm not going to need anything or lack anything because the Lord is my shepherd who provides. Look at, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Every day he gives us exactly what we need, food and drink and even better than that. In a crazy world of suffering and sorrow, it's like we're lying in a green pasture. It's like we're beside quiet waters because Jesus himself gives us peace. He feeds us, not just with bread and water, but he feeds us with himself, the bread of life. He feeds us with living water, his word, and that's what restores my soul when there's so much hurt. And so we can trust that our good shepherd leads me in paths of righteousness for his own namesake. Oh, how we would love for the path of life to be this straight, wide freeway and fast lane like the Autobahn in Germany and so easy, but you and I both know life is more like this with twists and turns and bumps and curves and peaks and valleys. Well, the good news is you don't need to make, make your own way because Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. The one who came here to be righteous and to give righteousness will lead you in paths of righteousness throughout your life. Why? Because you're such a good person? Because you tried so hard? Because you're an A-plus Christian? 
No. For his own namesake. Because he's Jesus, the Savior, Christ, the Chosen One, the Lord, the compassionate God. For his own name, he will lead you. And because that's true, this is why we can say the following verse with confidence. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We may have these peaks and high moments of life with success and wonderful happiness, but we're going to have a lot of moments in those dark valleys as we talked about at the beginning. And yet, through every minute of those travels, we need not fear because Jesus is with us. The one who came down here to be here in this world, the one who traveled to the absolute darkest valley of death, who traveled to the depths of hell on Calvary for you and for me, the one who was willing to travel to the depths of a tomb and then walked out the other side alive on Sunday morning is the one who says to you, surely I will be with you always. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And so, yes, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, whatever that struggle or sorrow may be, I need not be afraid because the shepherd is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. The, the shepherd's staff would protect, ward off enemies. It guides. This is what the great king of kings does. The one who crushed our enemy, the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion, he's the one who protects us the one who lived and died for us and gave us a new life and forgiveness. He's the one that will gently guide us each and every day. And so we can say with David, with confidence, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Can you picture that scene? Kind of uh, think like Star Wars or, or uh, Lord of the Rings or like Endgame or something like that, some epic war scene. Can you picture someone in the middle of this war scene just sitting down at a banquet table like having Thanksgiving dinner, like I'm just going to eat my turkey right now. Even in the presence of evil, even in the presence of enemies, the Lord gives us complete peace as he prepares a table before us. Why? Why such blessings? Because he anoints my head with oil like, a, like a, a prophet or a king in the Old Testament who was anointed with oil, chosen, and so many blessings would come, so God has anointed you and poured out on you the oil of his Holy Spirit and poured out on you the waters of baptism and chosen you to say, you are my sheep. I am the good shepherd and laid down my life to be a lamb for you so that you can be in my fold and all the blessings will follow, so much so that in bold words, my cup overflows. Like a giant pitcher of water pouring into like this little chalice or goblet and then it just pours and pours and pours and it just fills over the, spills over the side, so also in life, God's goodness and grace and mercy just pour into our hearts day after day after day so that my cup overflows. And when we think about those blessings of God and his love and his compassion as we walk through the difficulties of this life, that's what gives us confidence to conclude this psalm with King David. No matter what comes your way, no matter what tomorrow brings, no matter what's after graduation, no matter what hurt or pain you may have here or at home, we can say, surely, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The good shepherd is with me. The lamb who was slain is my shepherd who guides sheep now, and goodness and mercy will follow me until the day that I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Imagine that. Lost, wandering sheep trying to find their way through the valley of the shadow of death that we call this life in a sinful world, and one day we're going to dwell in the house of the Lord where there is no pain, no suffering, no sickness, no pressure, no tears. And the Lord, the Good Shepherd himself, will guide us there. Rejoice, give thanks, and take comfort. In all that you do, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Amen.
Let's join together to praise our God as we look forward to the joys of heaven. We'll join to sing this next song. Our leaders will sing the first refrain and uh, first verse, as you'll see on the screen. Then you're invited to join in singing the rest of the song. We pray. Lord Jesus, living and loving shepherd, so often we feel lost in this life as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and yet we fear no evil, for you are with us. You faced evil and conquered evil at the cross, and so we know that if you loved us this much, so also you love us enough to walk with us through this life. And so we pray that you guard us guide us and protect us as goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life until that day we dwell in your house forevermore. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in grace today. God bless your day. You are dismissed.